the flies are going to go through that hole, lay their maggots, the maggots are going to crawl out, and it's going to feed the birds. Hey, Jenna, come here. I need you to help me. Mama and Chicks are due for a move, I'd say about three days. Can you stay in here, Jonah, as I pull this and make sure nobody gets run over? Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Love to see birds on new grass. Good lord, lady, you're not supposed to poop in your own bed. <laughs> Guys, you notice anything different about our porta brooder behind me? Hey, Mr. Brown, what's the matter? Oh. Oh, you want that stick? Um, Here you go. Uh, that make you happy? Look, look, oh. <laughs> it's kind of hard to do that with a stick in your head. Okay, you see that porta brooder behind me? You guys notice anything different about it? Anybody? Yeah, there's a, there's a cover to it. Let me explain. This thing has served us well. We've not had to have a lid on it for years. Partly, probably, because it's in our front yard. But yesterday, I came out here, and right there, scattered around there, was six chickens. Dead, guts hanging out, mostly eaten. At first, I thought it was a hawk. That was my natural thought, but then I thought, you know, really, in our front yard? I mean, that's just not the tendency of the, our hawk problem. And that would have been pretty bold for them in this area. I mean, I haven't seen them be that bold. We do have hawk problem, but I haven't seen them be that bold. And then as I was getting ready to deal with it, gather some stuff, I came out here and there was a, there was a crow perched right here, looking down in there. And I thought, now mind you, this was not here. And I came out and it flew away. So it made me wonder, since these are so small, maybe it was a crow. Sad story, but still, life goes on and we gotta deal with it. Mr. F Brown's found him something to do. What are you doing in the feed bucket? We're in a weed bath. Taking a feed bath. That looks like fun. Okay, fair warning. This next part, you might want to fast forward it if you're a little squirmish. You might see some guts. I saw this morning that we had a dead Cornish cross. These are the uh, birds from yesterday. What? That's gross. You know? What happened? I think a um, crow got them. Some sort of predator. Where would you find them? In their pen, in the in the uh, porta okay. Yeah, their heads got pulled Ew. off. Some of one of those oh. heads got pulled off. Yeah. One of those heads got. Now we don't yeah, have it's sad, them. isn't it, guys? Yeah. yeah. I have an idea to make them better. Don't you have them? Don't you do it? Written hospital. Chicken hey. hospital. Papa's a chicken hospital, right? Right, Papa. Look yeah, I'm sorry. Them. No hospital will fix these guys. Thank you. Okay, we got it ready. 
There you go, guys. The maggot dispenser. In case you're wondering how in the world that's going to work, well, the flies are going to go through that hole, lay their maggots, the maggots are going to crawl out, and it's going to feed the birds. This is incredibly efficient use. I mean, nothing goes to waste here on this farm. We either compost it, put it out in the woods for the predators to be content on instead of our alive birds, or do this uh, maggot dispenser. You can do this with roadkill, uh, the dead animals on your farm, spoiled meat, anything like that. Oh, look. Mr. Brown, I've, I've been missing out. I need to check the floor of the coop more often. There's three duck eggs in here, my friend. Uh oh, you want to get those for me? This one is handy to have a toddler. I think he can stand up in here. Go get the eggs. Can you do it? Can you go get them? Come on, you can do it. There you go, good boy. Yes, thank you. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, he does this a lot easier than, oh no. <laughs> uh oh, uh oh, you can still give it to me. You gotta get it. You still gotta get it. Okay, get the other one. All done? Josiah, he didn't get the rest of them. Can you get them? Yeah. He cracked one, that's okay, we still gotta get it out. Here you go. Hey look guys, the guineas are still in here. Doors open, so maybe they're comfortable in here. Maybe they're gonna associate this as their home. All right y'all, I am back in the kitchen. I'm feeling good and I'm making raspberry cobbler. So last year, our raspberry bushes did amazing. And I got a little excited when I went to the grocery store yesterday because raspberries were on sale. And so I bought some because I really, really, really miss raspberry cobbler. So I figured why not? I was making it last year with all-purpose gluten-free flour, which is not horrible, but I try to avoid just gluten-free flours in general. I mean, I do eat them, um, but I try not to eat them every day at least. So I'm gonna try this recipe with cassava flour. It calls for all-purpose flour. Cassava flour has made the claim that you can do it one-to-one -one in some recipes. So why not try this? It can't be that bad, right? I'm really hoping I'm not eating my words later. So the recipe I'm using is gonna be in the show description. It is a blueberry cobbler that I have um, altered to fit my needs. I don't use refined sugar, I like to use maple syrup. First thing, I'm going to take my half a stick of butter in my pan that I'm baking the cobbler in. I'm gonna put it in the oven. Okay, so here's my raspberries that I got from the store yesterday. I know, I know, I should just wait till they're growing in my front yard, but I just couldn't. They're so good. This recipe calls to cook the raspberries or cook the fruit with the sugar and the lemon juice, but I don't do that. I just skip that step because I found I don't really need to do it. Here is my raspberries in the bowl. I'm going to put in my, sugar, my uh, maple syrup. Stir it up real nice. I don't, um, I also don't add the lemon juice. There you go. Now I'm going to make my, my, my breading mixture. I don't even know what it's called. My one cup of flour. Okay, so I make my own baking powder. This is the cookbook, Grain Free Family Table by Carrie Vitt that I got my baking powder recipe out of. Half a teaspoon salt. to use this maple syrup I buy it on Amazon um, it's the best price I have found on organic maple syrup I don't like to use refined sugar when I'm when I'm baking or cooking I like to use maple syrup when you're cooking with honey or maple syrup you have to decrease the liquid somewhere else in the recipe because the, sh the sugar is not a liquid, and so if you add all these liquids together, you're gonna, get, you're gonna have too much of a soupy recipe. So that's something that you kinda just have to play with. So I'm gonna add it all in. Grain-free or gluten-free flours, they tend to soak up more of the liquid, so what I do, I like to add less and then just add more if needed. It looks like I'm gonna need to add a little bit more milk. 
So what I like to do is add just, you know, a, a small amount of liquid and then just add it as needed. And this is about the correct consistency of, for this cobbler batter. My butter has melted and I'm going to just pour this in over the butter. You just pour the berries over the top. And now we bake it. 40 to 45 minutes until golden brown. Cobblers come out of the oven and I think it looks pretty good. I did, I did already take a little bit of a taste of it. A couple things that I learned were I need to use a bigger pan and I think the cassava flour turned out, of course we won't know until we all eat it, which we're about to do right now. You like that Mr. Brown? He's digging in. That's how you get a to you want to know how to get a toddler to eat? Feed them cobbler. You like it? And yeah, it's actually pretty good. Yeah. The um, the cassava flour works out really well. And I it, wish it was just a little thinner. Yay, yay. And that's your homemade ice cream. Uh huh, with homemade ice cream. What do you think, Jonah? Uh, good. Yeah. Oh, I can tell you like it. Good. You got an ice cream stash. Mm -hmm. 